namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa morning everyone today uh, we'll be discussing about a new topic that is about the life span of rupas sometimes we can call the momentariness of rupa as well so in this regard uh, today's lecture will be quite interesting because uh, about the momentariness about the life span we have three different opinions within the theravada tradition which was one one which was held by the ancient commentaries then what is what is recommended or what is uh, stated by the pali commentaries and then uh, what has been mentioned by mulatika we uh, will not be able to uh, exactly confirm which statement would uh, agree with the uh, canonical explanations because the canon doesn't uh, explicitly mention what is the life span of a rupa it mentions that it arises and passes away uh, and in with yamaka we can find slight some sort of information regarding certain rupas uh, how they uh, how, what is their phenomenon is uh, anyhow that is something that uh, someone needs to extensively uh, study uh, in order to get an accurate uh, explanation on this so my responsibility is to explain to introduce you these three notions about the life span of rupa we know that all the conditioned realities arise and pass away and they have a momentary existence and uh, we also uh, got to know in the in the previous lecture series that uh, they were they are called conditioned realities sankata realities which happens due to the due to causes and is also very famous and prominent idea in buddhism that conditioned realities are caused by some other conditioned realities and that's the nature of the conditioned realities to pass away as soon as they arise and they have a existence of a very rapid uh, phenomenon uh, they arise and pass away very quickly and their existence is quite uh, short uh, so now uh we may move into this topic uh, but there are, there are a lot of uh, uh, scholarly explanations on this matter uh, why the theravadians are of this opinion i'm not going into detail about uh, what the opinions of other scholars are about this this fact about this matter but i'll just refer to the information that is found in the literature so the topic would be life span of rupa so we have three opinions ancient commentaries then we have pali commentaries we have mulatika when you go into mulatika you find that there are uh, lots of uh, new suggestions the sadhu is making on this matter uh, we see a great uh diverging of uh, mulatika uh, from the uh, traditional explanation uh, so we'll first quickly move into the explanation of the given by the ancient commentaries we all know all know that rupa arises and passes away according to theravada tradition in a in a rapid speed then uh, regarding the uh, explanation now you can find this explanation in the vibanga vibanga attakata for example abhidharma attakata number 2 uh you can see this explanation given by the ancient commentators i have given you the references according to it consciousness has three sub mind moments now existence of a consciousness if i draw this this as a consciousness conscious uh, this, uh, the life span of a consciousness is considered as a one chitta kana one mind moment mm one mind moment so this one mind moment is constituted with three equal sub mind moments one sub mind moment s m m sub mind moment so these three sub mind moments are equal in their duration and this is the existence of a chitta the first sub mind moment is called its genesis arising then persisting phase comes second the last would be the phase of vanishing uppada titi banga we normally say 
then this uh, the consciousness arising and passing away in a rapid speed uh, in three phases it keeps on happening this process keeps on happening immediately after a consciousness passes away immediately after consciousness passes away another consciousness happens to arise and this also is considered with three sub mind moment and this keeps on happening this process keeps on happening process keeps on happening so what the ancient commentary is suggesting now we know that uh, in our body four types of rupas occur according to theravada tradition matter born out of kamma matter born with out of consciousness out of heat or coldness which is called tejo tejo dhatu and nutriment now the explanation is focused on kamma rupa matter born out born out of karma so according to the ancient commentaries matter can occur within a human or within a, a body of animate body at at any sub mind moment of the existence of the consciousness now consciousness process and mind type process is quite different now while the consciousness is processing matter also has its own process so during this process now for instance if you think uh, i'll draw the matter in a different color one sub mind moment all right now the consciousness the the matter which is not produced by consciousness matter is ha happening in a different uh, ha has its own process while consciousness has its own process only uh, the mind that is born out of consciousness has a great relationship with the consciousness process now according to commentaries except the chitta jarupas that is made out of consciousness matter produced by consciousness we shall discuss it later they can occur they can arise at any sub mind moment they can happen in the body at any sub mind moment for example at the first sub mind moment some matter would occur then it keeps on existing for certain time even at the second sub mind moment another group of matter may occur they also keep on existing so in it it at each sub mind moment matter would occur and they have their own life span so according to the commentaries so according to the ancient commentaries what they are suggesting is now if you consider this as the first consciousness of the life pratisandhi consciousness and the following are number as number 2 3 4 5 till uh, 17 and 18 for example the first consciousness will be a pratisandhi chitta uh, uh, consciousness rebirth linking consciousness then the following would be bhavanga consciousness which we shall discuss when we come into the explanation of mentalities now a being is born and the consciousness keeps on happening again and again a similar sort of a consciousness till we get a new object to cognize so during this process while while the process is going on matter is a happening within our body so what the commentators are suggesting now we can see we can measure the life span of matter in terms of the life span of consciousness the reason is there is an explanation or sutra given in the anguttara nikaya buddha mentions that he sees no other reality which is which has a rapid space in his life span as the chitta does so chitta is very rapid it rises and passes away immediately it passes away immediately as it arises and it has a very short life span and uh, buddha uh, has also mentioned it is very difficult to give a simile to explain its rapidness so quite difficult to explain its rapidness so it shows that according to his uh, standard according to his understanding uh, the consciousness is the uh, reality which has the shortest life span which is the uh, most momentary reality we can call so depending on that the theravadians have postulated that it's obvious uh, the consciousness would pass away immediately and there is no other reality which is shorter than the which has a shorter life span than consciousness so ultimately rupa should have a longer life span than that of consciousness so then they would try they try to uh, explain the ex, uh, life span of rupa based on the consciousness so it means the uh, the life span of the consciousness is considered as the shortest shortest uh, 
uh, time period we can call like like in science we have uh, the Planck Planck era uh, that is uh, 43 uh, times of a 10 sec of a second uh, minus 43 so this is considered as the shortest time that the period of time that can be that can exist and they consider the big bang happening in such a short period so according to theravada tradition the shortest lifespan would be the consciousness the existence of the existence of the consciousness then it's uh, now uh, what we are trying to do is what they have tried to do is uh, try to measure the lifespan of consciousness lifespan of rupa based on the lifespan of consciousness Though the rupa which occurred in the first sub mind moment, this is something that we have to keep in, keep give a lot of attention. Now, in the first sub mind moment, some rupa arose, and they would exist. They would exist till the arising moment, arising sub moment. Now, keep in mind that consciousness have sub moments, three sub moments which are equal in their duration. The rupa which arose in the beginning, the arising moment of the uh, rebirth link in the first consciousness. Now, just think about this as a first consciousness. We don't need to worry about whether it's rebirth linking or bhavanga, because if you consider this is the more first consciousness which arose, and and together with it, some kamaj rupas appeared. They would exist till the arising moment, till the arising moment of the seventeenth consciousness. So, at the seventeenth consciousness, arising moment of the seventeenth consciousness. This is the moment they arose. At this arising moment, the 17th consciousness, they would pass away. That is the explanation. Arising moment, they happen in the arising moment of the first consciousness and they would pass away at the arising moment of the 17th consciousness. And then, if we consider about the rupa which arose at the second mind moment, second sub mind moment of the first consciousness would pass away at the second sub mind moment of the 17th consciousness. Then, the rupa which arose at the third sub mind moment of the first consciousness would pass away at the third sub mind moment of the 17th consciousness, 17th mind. So, this is the explanation. So, now it is very clear. If we count, if we count the, uh, the duration based on the consciousness, now we can see this is the number 17. So, the number 16 would have been the previous one. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 16. 16 mind moments have passed away. Mind moments is the entire lifespan of a consciousness. So, so, 16 mind moments. And it also has another sub mind moment. Another sub mind moment. So, according to the ancient commentaries, and even you look into this, we can see the num uh, 16, because 16 would be completed with the first sub mind moment of the 17th consciousness and it is another extra sub mind moment. So, according to the ancient commentaries, the lifespan of a rupa is equal to one third, 16 and one third of consciousness, 16 and one third of consciousness. This is the explanation you can find in the ancient commentaries. It is not, not only given with regard to the rising uh, the rebirth linking, but also explanations have been given uh, related to the uh, near the death moment as well. So, both the explanations suggest that, both the explanations suggest that according to ancient commentaries, Rupa have a lifespan of 16 consciousness and one third, plus one third. 16 consciousness plus one third. If you look into the Pali, it's very clear. Uh, so, but the first sentence, Rupe Darante Yeva Sol, if you go into 2.138, Rupe Darante Yeva Sol Sichitta Nupa Jitva Nirujjati, Nirujjanti. While corporeality is present, 16 consciousnesses arise and pass away. This statement, this sentence can be interpreted in four ways, as the Muratika suggests. I have not given it in the paper. It can be explained in four ways. Now, the, what, what does it mean by Rupe Darante while the corporeality is present? So, are we going to include the arising moment and the vanishing moment? If we include both, the number would be differ, one number, uh, there would be a certain number of uh, lifespan can be explained based on consciousness. Then, if we exclude only the arising but leaves away the passing away, vanishing moment, or do we include the vanishing moment and leave away the passing away, or do we leave out the both the 
uh, occasion. So, based on that, uh, as Mula Tika suggests, there can be four explanations for this sentence only. But if you look into the other sentences, it's very clear. It becomes very clear that what is the lifespan of a corporate reality uh, based according to the ancient commentaries. Tampana satta rasamena chittena saddi nirujjati. It passes away together with the uh, 17th consciousness, the rising moment of the 17th consciousness. Now the explanation comes. Patamanghi patisandhi chittang. The first chitta is the patisandhi chitta. Dutiyang bhavanga chittang. The second is the bhavanga chitta. Then tatiyang bhavanga chitta. Third is also a bhavanga and keep, keeps on happening. Even the 16th is a bhavanga. Solasamang bhavanga. Dutiyang solasamang bhavanga. The 16th is a, even a bhavanga chitta. Tesu eke kasa. Upad titi banga vasena thayo thayo khana. Each consciousness has three sub mind moments, sub moments, which are called genesis, persisting, and vanishing. So each consciousness is considered with three sub mind moments. Tatha eke kasa chittas tisu tisu kanesu samatinsa samatinsa kama jirupan upajanti. So we are talking about the uh, beings who are born in a mother's womb. Uh, so, at the moment, from the Patisandhi moment, they get three types of uh, Kamajarupas. Three types of Kamajarupas. That's why it says in each moment, three, three types of Kamaja Kalapa. Sorry, three types of Kamaja Kalapa. Each Kalapa contains 10 Rupas. So, altogether, there are 30 Kamajarupas. 30. So, all these 30, it, it would increase after some time, but during the first phase, first period, uh, as soon as someone is born in the mother's womb, they get only three types of kalapas. So these kamaja kalapas keeps on arising at, at each sub mind moment. At each sub mind moment. So uh, three kalapas contains thirty rupas. All thirty rupas keep on arising in each sub mind moment. Tesu patisandhi chitta suppadakane samuttitam kamaja rupa. The Kamaja Rupa, 30 Kamaja Rupas which arose at the arising moment of the Patisandhi Chitta, Satta Rasamasa Bhavanga Chittasa Uppadakkane Uppadakkane Eva Nirujjati. It passes away at the arising moment of the 17th consciousness. The Bhavanga consciousness which is the 17th. It is not the 17th Bhavanga, should be the Bhavanga which is number 17 because if you look into the numbering, first is Patisandhi, second is Bhavanga, third is another Bhavanga. So, 17th is a bhavanga, which is the 16th bhavanga when you exclude the first patisandhi chitta. Anyway, the 17th consciousness. Now, just keep in that, keep attention on the number. So, Kamajrupas arose together with the first sub mind moment of the first consciousness, first sub mind moment of the first consciousness, and they would pass away at the first sub mind moment of the 17th consciousness, of the 17th consciousness. So, what does this suggest? The life of the rupa is equal to 16 consciousness and also one third of it. So, uh, it passes away at the rising moment of the 17th consciousness. Titikkane samuttita, titikkane eva. So, the rupas which arose at the middle phase, middle sub mind moment, the second sub mind moment of the Patisandhi Chitta would pass away at the second sub mind moment of the 17th consciousness. And also, which arose at the third sub mind moment, which arose at the third time of the first consciousness, uh, third sub mind moment of the Patisandhi consciousness, the rupa which arose would pass away at the third sub mind moment of the 17th consciousness. So, all these explanations suggest that the, according to ancient commentaries, the uh, lifespan of a rupa is 16 mind moments plus uh, thir uh, one third of a consciousness. And I have given you the explanations on this. If you go into 2.141, 2.141, all these information suggests that according to ancient commentary, the lifespan of a rupa, at least of Kamaj rupas, at least Kamaj rupas, are equal to 16, uh, one third times of lifespan of a consciousness. You can confirm this with the Muratika explanation because we know that the Pali commentaries, now next we are going to discuss about it, Pali commentaries suggest that the lifespan of a rupa is 17 mind moments. Uh, Mulatika suggests it's 16 mind moments, but the ancient commentaries are telling us it's, it, it is uh, 16 plus one third of a consciousness. You can see it in the footnote, number four footnote. Yapana etehi rupasa sattaratha chittakana ayukata vutta in the Pali commentaries. 
now we are going to discuss about this says that rupa has 17 mind moments lifespan of a 17 mind moment yacha attakatayam attakata means the ancient commentaries in the ancient commentaries tatiya baghadika solasa chittakkana ayukata utta so ayukata so in the ancient commentaries mentioned the lifespan of a rupa is 16 mind moments plus one third so it's completely different from the pali commentaries it's different from the uh, pali commentaries then uh, the Muratika goes on saying it should be 16 based on some information in the uh, Vibhanga commentary. So this would be the first explanation according to Pali commentaries 16 plus one third. Then according uh, sorry ancient commentaries I beg your pardon ancient commentaries. Then we move into Pali commentaries according to Pali commentaries that was the ancient commentaries. Now we go into Pali commentaries. They stoutly refuse this idea, very strongly refuses this idea. So this is a very clear information to clear evidence to say that commentaries. Now some used to say that the ancient commentaries are direct teachings of the Buddha, indiscriminately. Indiscriminately they say it's, it's teaching of the Buddha and this shows that it's not so. Because if it was something given by the Buddha, the commentators would not, uh, would not go in to explain that it's wrong. Now they are, they, are, they are saying that the ancient commentaries were wrong in this regard. Uh, the, uh, the Rupa has a different lifespan according to them. So they try to show, the Pali commentators try to show that how it is, why it is not accurate. The Pali commentary on Vibhanga has stoutly re rejected the above notion of the ancient commentaries on the basis of two notions. So they are bringing two notions on this. They are suggesting two. One is uh, their own claim. Second is based on explanation on Yamaka, according to Yamaka. So according to the Pali commentaries, it is an error to state that any matter that occurred at the arising moment of a certain consciousness would pass away that pass away at the arising moment of another consciousness, at the arising moment of another consciousness. So if you look into, if you remember, now according to the ancient commentaries, if something arose at the arising moment, it would pass away at the arising moment of another consciousness. Same thing with the conscious uh, rupa which arose at the uh, middle stage, like, like the second phase would pass away at the second phase of another consciousness. Rupa which arose at the third phase of a certain consciousness would pass away at the third stage of another consciousness. So there is a certain kind of a matching. But the, commenta the Pali commentators are saying this is utterly wrong. This utterly it is wrong according to them. So what they are suggesting is now if a Rupa arose, arises, arose at a first stage of a certain consciousness, it has to pass away, it has to pass away at the passing away of another consciousness, not at the arising stage. It, if, if it happens at the arising stage of a certain consciousness, its passing away should be at the passing away of another consciousness. Why they are suggesting this? Based on some information found in Yamaka. So it is mentioned in Yamaka, this is regarding Chitta Jarupas. Now the Muratika is suggesting that the Pali commentators are equalizing. Now whatever is mentioned for Chitta Jarupa should be applied to Kamba Jarupas as well. They are assuming that. Whatever is applied to any sort of Rupa should be applied to all, so all other types of Rupas. So based on that, they are assuming what is mentioned in Yamaka with regard to Chitta Jarupas should be applicable, should be applicable for all types of Rupas. Now, according to Yamaka, uh, the inhale, breathing, the rupa of breathing, inhaling and exhaling. Now, Yamaka says if breathing the chitta rupa, breathing is sort of a chitta rupa according to uh, the tradition, chitta rupa, a sort of a rupa produced by, by, uh, by our mind. Now, if this rupa arose, at the, it arises always, Chitta Rupa arises always at the arising moment of a consciousness. That's another fundamental that we shall discuss. Now, Rupa arose at this moment, according to Yamaka, passes away with the, with the last phase of another consciousness. Now, this arising and passing away. This is only for Chitta Rupas, which has been mentioned, especially for Anapanasat, like uh, breathing. 
the Pali commentators are applying, applying, applying it to all the other rupas. So now what they are suggesting is, so it's an error to say that chitta which arose with the first mind moment, first sub mind moment of a rupa which arose, I, sorry, rupa which arose at the first sub mind moment of a certain consciousness would pass away at another arising moment of another consciousness. That's, that's an error. It has to be the rupa which arose at the first sub mind moment has to pass away at the third sub mind moment of another consciousness based on the yamaka. Because in yamaka it is mentioned the breathing which happens, which occurred at the arising moment of a certain consciousness passes away at the third sub mind moment of another consciousness. This is the argument. So based on that, the ancient commentators are making a big error about they are about the lifespan of the rupa. And based on that, they are suggesting that the second fact is commentary directly mentions that the lifespan of a rupa is 17. It doesn't refer to any reference in the text, but it is just saying claiming that. So one can ask why can't it be 16? Because now if the rising and passing away are at the first and third stages of respective consciousnesses, so surely this should have a, a, a number like like a full number, not not with fractions, Fric uh, fractions like friction fractions. So uh, so now one can ask why it can't be 16, why it can't be 15. We don't have any 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 explanations to this, as far as I know. So the commentators are saying it has to be 17. So instead of saying 16 and one third, which it has to be a full number, like like a, how do you call it, cardinal or some. Um, not 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 with the fractions so it has to be a full number so either it has to be 15 16 or something so they are ex explaining they are ex mentioning that it has to be 17 not 16 plus one third right so so they are refuting it based on two notions the first is it's an error to say that the rupa arises at the arising moment of a consciousness and passes away at the arising moment of another consciousness instead it, we have to say Rupa arises at the arising moment of a certain consciousness, which, which happened at the arising moment of a certain consciousness, passes away at the vanishing moment of another consciousness. So, samely, if that Rupa happened in the second sub mind moment, right, second sub mind moment, so this is number 17, then in the 18th, in the 18th consciousness, arising moment this rupa has to pass away. Then the rupa which happened at the third sub mind moment will pass away at the second sub mind moment of the 18th consciousness. This is the explanation of the ancient commentaries. Now we can look into this. We can we can have a clear explanation on this. Well, if you do go into uh, 2.14, 2.2. The Pali. Tasma patisandhi chitte ne sahupannam khammaj rupa so the Kamaja Rupa which occurred, uh, arose with the first consciousness, together with the first consciousness, Sahupanna. Tato Pattaya, after that, Satta Rasamena Sadding Nirujjati, it passes away together with the 17th, together with the 17th, third sub-mind moment of, this uh, of the 17th mind moment. Patisandhi Chittasa Titikkane Upanna, so the Rupa which arose at the second sub-mind moment of the first consciousness. Uh, would pass away at the arising moment of the 18th consciousness. So it's slightly completely different from what the ancient commentators, commentators have mentioned. It's passing away at the arising moment of the 18th consciousness. Patisandhi chittasa bangakkane upannang, the rupa which arose at the third sub moment of the first consciousness would pass away at the titikkade, attarasamasa titikkane nirujjati. Passes away at the second sub mind moment of sub mind moment of the 18th consciousness. Imina nayena yojana khatabha. So this is how it should be applied to all sort of rupas. So according to this, the lifespan of a rupa is 17 mind moments. Now in the previous explanation it was 16 plus one third. Now it is 17. It is 17. Now we can see the difference. Normally, these days, today, we study based on the explanation given in the Pali commentaries, not what is mentioned in the ancient commentaries. 
Pali commentators have stoutly refuted this, have rejected this idea. Mm. So then uh, we go into 2.143. It should be noted that though ancient commentaries and Pali commentaries heavily disagree upon the lifespan of corporeality, they are in agreement upon the lifespan of a consciousness and its sub moments. So, regarding the consciousness, they are they are in the same same as same explanation. Now, con lifespan of a consciousness and its sub mind moments, it, they 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 do agree. Both the commentary says a consciousness has three sub mind moments, which are equal in their duration. Then two point one four four. According to birth commentaries, Kamajarupas, Uttarajarupas, and Aharajarupas in living beings can arise at all sub mind moments of consciousness. They can happen at all sub mind moments of consciousness, regardless of the. So, they, they, the rupas have a, their own process, while Chittajarupas can occur only at the arising sub mind moment of a consciousness that we shall discuss later. Chittajarupas are exception here, exceptional. So, Chitta Jirupas always arise together with the consciousness, not during the uh, second or third phases. But Kamma Jirupas, Ahara Jirupas and Uttu Jirupas are not related to consciousness, so they have their own process. So, they can appear at any given time, any uh, sub-mind moment, any sub-mind moment. Then, according to Pali commentaries, now we are going to explain about the lifespan of Rupas. Uh, don't worry that the rupas will be detailedly explained from next week onwards. We are going into Kamaj rupas next week. Uh, so uh, don't worry, we shall we shall talk about because there will be some new new terminologies. Now concretely produced rupas we call nippana rupas. Nippana rupas the 18 they are concretely produced. Except the last 10, I think we, we, we already discussed Rupa is 18. So these 18 Nippana Rupas have a lifespan of 17, 17 mind moments. Out of the 10 Anipanna, 10 Anipanna, you have three called Lahuta, lightness of Rupa, Muduta, softness, Kamanyata, Kamanyatha, that is adaptability, they also have the equal lifespan of 17 mind moments. 17 mind moments is equal, that also we have to mention, 17 mind moments, mm, is equal to 51 sub-mind moments. 17 mind moments are equal to 51 sub-mind moments. one sub mind moments right so if you now we shall better write it here also 17 mind moments is equal to 51 sub mind moments if you look into the ancient commentaries 16 and one third of mind moments is equal to 49 sub mind moments equal to 49 sub mind moments is 51 sub mind moments. Then now they are explained that that is basically about the Anipana Rupa, the concrete produced matter. Regarding the Anipana Rupas, there can be slight differences. Then we come into Akasa or Paricheda, it's also 17 mind moments equal to 51 sub mind moments. Because if you take the limitation, limit of a Kalapa, it has the same lifespan with the Kalapa. If you take the space in between them, the space in between them, we consider based on the lifespan of a rupa. Now, if these two kalapas, now space between these two kalapas, when they arise and pass away, we consider the space also depends on it, depends on meat, because it's the space between two kalapas. So, therefore, the lifespan of the space is considered based on the lifespan of the kalapas. But in the reality, this space is the already existing Ajita Kasa and it does not have a uh, lifespan. Uh, it, it has been there for ever according to Theravadians. Then the Vinyati. Vinyati is, we shall discuss about these Rupas in detail. Vinyati is the 
uh, we call um, the intimations uh, how the impact impact of the mind into body while we are working physically and verbally making acts so it's equal to one mind moment one mind which is equal to two the three sub mind moments is equal to three sub mind moments then we have another four rupas called upachaya and santati which we call jati rupa collectively jati rupa and then we have jarata anichata jarata and anichata now both the commentators ancient and pali uh, ancient and pali commentators they say rupa takes one sub mind moment for their it's arising one sub mind moment is arising and one sub mind moment with passing away it arises and passes away one sub mind moment for arising one sub mind moment for passing away and it exists persists for another 49 sub mind moments according to the pali commentaries if you take the ancient commentaries it would be 1 1 and 47 sub mind moments because the entire duration is 51 sub mind moments so their arising and passing away has to be discussed on sub mind sub mind moments because according to the pali commentaries rupa takes one sub mind moment for its arising and one sub mind moment is passing away the remaining would be the persisting phase phase of persisting so now this arising is called the jati rupa upachaya and santati this is called anichata anichata passing away and this phase is called jarata jarata decaying jara has to be explained in various ways it's a very nice topic but here normally what we take is the first is persisting phase the titi phase is the jarata so according to this jati rupa has one sub mind moment jati rupa has one sub mind moment and also the anichata has one sub mind moment while jarata has 49 sub mind moments so this is the explanation of all the rupas based on sorry uh, based on the pali commentaries okay then move we move on to mulatika when we come to mulatika there are a lot of changes that we have to do even starting from the lifespan of a chitta. Now, so far we discussed, according to both the commentaries, chitta, lifespan of chitta is divided into three equal phases, arising, persisting and passing away. We call upada, titi and banga. Then, kamajarupas, uttuja and aharajarupas can occur at any phase, at any phase. And there is a disagreement regarding the lifespan. According to ancient commentaries, rupas can arise. Then, according to both the commentaries, the arising phase, the arising moment is only one sub mind moment is dedicated or, share or, or spared for the arising. One sub mind moment is spared for the vanishing. The remaining are the persisting. So, the disagreement was with regard to the time, the duration, the entire duration. So. According to ancient commentaries, the first persisting phase is 47 sub mind moments, while the commentators say, Pali commentators, 49. So the entire duration would change. According to ancient commentaries, it's 49 sub mind moments, while the Pali commentators say it's 51 sub mind moments, which is equal to 17 mind moments, and of the Pali commentaries, 16 and one third of the one third of mind moments now when we, we we may move into the mulatika mulatika's explanation so when we come into the explanation the module given by mulatika we have to do a lot of changes according to mulatika the lifespan of a consciousness is constituted with two sub mind moments not three two sub mind moments which are equal two sub mind moments then the next point is 
uh, Rupa has a slower pace, lower pace that is pace of existence, PAC I'm calling, in the phenomenon, how it arises and passes away. So as the Pali commentators has suggested that Rupa would take only sub one sub-mind moment for its arising and one sub-mind moment for its passing away, Muratika is suggesting no, it takes the entire mind moment for its arising, entire mind moment, one mind moment for its arising and one mind moment for its passing away. So there is nothing to discuss about Rupa arising in certain sub-mind moments according to the Mulatika. The reason is, though Chitta has a rapid existence, rapid, rapid pace, the conscious uh, Rupas arise and pass away quite slower than that of, uh, slower than the consciousness. Even the commentators, Pali, ancient commentators have suggested Rupa have a Danda pace, it arise and pass away slow, it, it has a slow existence slow pace in its existence. But it, it recognized that Rupa and the Chitta arises at the same speed. Arising duration would be the same. So Mulatika was, was suggesting no, it has to, it, it should be different. And the arising and the passing away of Rupa takes the entire one mind moment. It means two sub mind moments. Entire mind moment which is equal to two sub mind moments, not three. Two, because according to Mulatika, please keep in mind, it's two sub mind moments, not three. Consciousness has two sub mind moments. Then, the number of the, the duration would be, according to him, 16 consciousness. He's taking information from the Patisambhida Vibhanga of the Vibhanga commentary. He suggested, I'm not going, uh, we are not going to discuss about this matter, why he brings that idea, because it's not, it's, we, we will focus only at the, because uh, for that we need to have a lot of explanations, even, even based on some vitis, that he's, vitis, the knowledge of vitis is necessary to explain this point. So now 16 sub, 16 mind moments according to him, 16, so 16 mind moments is equal to now, if you think with the approach of the Pali commentators, you may think it's 48 sub-mind moments. No. According to Mulatika, it is 32 sub-mind moments. Because the consciousness is constituted with two sub-mind moments, not three. Two, not three. So therefore, Mulatika is making a huge difference. It's sort of a revolution, I feel, what he's doing to the uh, tradition here. Whether it's correct or wrong, whether it's accurate or not, you can see a huge difference in his approach. Even the duration for arising and vanishing is different. The lifespan is different. The entire consciousness, the existence of consciousness is different. So this is a, now you can, some may think like, like whether the Mulatika was it really Theravada? Yes, it was a Theravada, it, it is a Theravada book and the, teacher has very deep knowledge about the Theravada tradition, but he is suggesting, he is making some suggestions based on some, some information from the text. That is the, that's the important case. He is not just suggesting out of nothing. He is bringing information from here and there. And there are a lot of places that he disagree, considerably a number of places, I would say. Most of the cases he, he agrees and explains what the commentary says, but in some places he greatly disagree with the commentators. So then, uh, so what happens is, according to this, according to this, how do we draw this? How do we draw Rupa? They exist arising, existing, persisting and passing away. Now according to this, two sub-mind moments. Now if you think with the sub-mind, because we drew this uh, with sub-mind moments. According to ancient commentaries and Pali, ancient commentaries and Pali commentaries. According to ancient commentaries, if you draw it, it should be one sub mind moment for the arising, one for the passing away, 47 for the persisting. But if you go into Pali commentaries, it's one, 
149 and 1. 147, 1, 149, 1. Now think about the now Muratika. How do we draw it? Two sub mind moments for the arising because entire consciousness, the lifespan of consciousness is spared for that. Then two sub mind moments for the vanishing. Altogether, there are only 32. They are, they, they are for, for 28 sub mind moments for the persisting. 28. Always keep in mind. What is the lifespan of our consciousness according to Muratika? It's two sub mind moments, not one. Two sub mind moments. And then uh, we go in to explain what are its now the explanation about the other rupas, all the rupas, like like the chart. The concretely produced matter, nippanna rupa. Nippanna rupa has 16 mind moments which is equal to 32 sub mind moments 32 sub mind moments then anipana rupa uh, it's 10 anipana this is 18 nipana 10 anipana lahuta muduta kamanyata and akasa all have equal lifespan, 16 mind moments, which is equal to 32 sub mind moments. Then we go into Vinyati. Vinyati, we know that it has only one mind moment. So, according to that, one mind moment, which is equal to two sub mind moments, not three, equal to two sub mind moments. Then we go to Lahuta uh, Jati Rupa because it's equal to Pachaya and Santati, then Jarata and Anichata. We can look into the chart. Arising is two sub mind moments, and passing away is two sub mind moments, existing is 28 sub mind moments. So that is two sub mind moments, then Anichata is two sub mind moments, Jarata is 28 sub mind moments. When you look into this explanation given by the Mulatika, suggesting that the face of pace of Rupa is different that of uh, consciousness, seems like instead of going into sub mind moments, we can clearly explain the existence of Rupa based on mind moments only. So instead of saying two sub mind moments, we can say it has a one mind moment for arising, one mind moment of passing away and 14 mind moments for its existing. So we don't need to, I personally feel we don't need to go into sub mind moments when we are explaining the Rupa based on Muratika, explanation of Muratika. So we can just explain based on mind moments. So instead of saying two sub mind moments, we can say one mind moment for rising, one mind moment for passing away and 14 mind moments for the jarata decaying or the persisting phase, all right? So, and also this would help and we, we, you can also make a module for the chittavitis, how the rupa strikes. So it shows that rupa may strike, according to these explanations, for the striking even, it cost, cost takes a one entire mind moment. So the entire module of chittavitis would differ according based on this explanation and also I don't have time to explain this. Uh, some some other vital factors. Now we normally say rupa uh, nama associates the vattu rupa which occurred together with the previous consciousness. So what is the logical logic uh, logical reason for this? The vattu rupa is stronger. The consciousness associates the strongest vattu rupa. So when we try to explain what the reason is, Mulatika suggestion makes some sense. So likewise, more the explanation of Muratika can be applied to some other places in order to give a very logical explanation. So keep this in mind. Try to make your module when you are doing the Chittavitis and do other, other, other explanations in Abhidhamma. Try to apply this mod module of the Muratika as well. And also, moreover, the final point, pointing out 2.152, moreover, pointing out, pointing to some information found in Yamaka, the Muratika states that all types of Rupa, not only Chittaja, all types of Rupas in animate bodies 
never arise at the vanishing moment of a Chittupada because it doesn't have a persisting moment of a Chittupada. Keep in mind it has only two phases and a Rupa would never occur, starts is occurring at this second mind moment. It means it would not, Rupa would never happen like this and it would never pass away if you take this 17th mind moment for instance. Rupa would, none of the Rupas would pass away like this. So, it always starts its arising at the arising moment of a consciousness and it's passing away ends at the ending moment of consciousness, regardless of the type of Rupa, whether it's Kamaja, Chitta, Utuja and Aharaja. That's another point. So, even, now some scholars are disagreeing with this, what is the reason why Kamaj Rupas cannot happen? because they have no such relationship with the consciousness process. There are, there are discussions on this matter. But anyway, what he is suggesting based on some information found in Yamaka, his opinions are very strong, uh, which even Lady Sayadu could not reject. Uh, he did not like it, but he could not reject it. Uh, so, because uh, evidences are very strong. So, according to him, Rupas in animate bodies would never occur, arise at the vanishing moment of a consciousness and would never pass away at the arising moment of consciousness. Always Rupa arises at the, with the arising moment of the consciousness uh, and pass away at the vanishing moment of a consciousness. That is another uh, important factor that he is studying. So, if, if you look into this uh, Abhidhamma, uh, you can see most of the information in Pakinaka Katha. Pakinaka Katha or something, Pakinaka. In the Vibhanga commentary, Khanda Vibhanga. You can see if you read the commentaries and the Mulatika, and also if you can Anutika, you will see the Mulatika is making an, I would call, a, he, he is slaughtering or he is giving slots, lots of disagreements, he is being lot of disagreements with the commentators about this issue, about this Rupa, connection between Rupa and Nama. Mulatika has a completely different opinion from the uh, mainstream of the Theravada tradition. So our lecture would end today. I took some time because I, I, I happened to start a bit late. Uh, so today's lecture was about the lifespan of the Rupas. Now, someone can ask the question, so what does this, how does this apply to us? Just giving this for your information and for your knowledge to maybe you are able to be th able to think and also know that this is what the tradition is. But all of them suggest that the Rupa has a rapid, exi rapid existence. So, it does not contradict with the main notion of Buddhism that Rupa is impermanent, Rupa is suffering and Rupa is non suffering It does not affect your Vipassana practice as well. So, just to keep in mind, the scholars, the Theravadians have disagreements upon this matter uh, about the lifespan of Rupa and Mulatika is foremost in it, which have suggested some fully different explanations to that of the mainstream of the Theravada teaching. So all of them, the, the point that we should take away is the Rupa is impermanent and we can show a certain kind of relationship with, it, with the consciousness process and the uh, Consciousness is the uh, element which has the shortest lifespan and Rupa can be measured by the lifespan of consciousness and it shows that they arise and pass away rapidly, new new reality is arising so there is no self, no person to be taken as I, me or myself. Yeah. So I can conclude the lecture opening the forum for the Q&A. Uh, hi Pante. Yes Dr. Okay. <laughs> So what did Lady Sayadaw say about this? Ha, Lady Sayadaw didn't give any suggestion, any any conclusion on this. Uh, he just mentions that Mulatika is disagreeing on this matter. He has explained Paramatma Deepani based on the Pali commentaries because that's how we, that's what we study today. So what is prevailing today is the 17 mind moment explanation. Uh, so, with regard to the lifespan, he is with the Pali commentaries it seems, but he says that the Mulatika has such an opinion, it seems like he did not dislike, he did not like it anyway, 
But with regard to the uh, two mind moments of the consciousness, he is with Mulatika. He suggests that what Mulatika says makes sense. He is bringing an opinion from, uh, he is bringing an information from the Kathavat to saying that Venerable Moggali Puttatis, there was a debate. Uh, some scholars, some schools said that uh, consciousness exists for entire day or entire month, the same consciousness. So the counter argument was, they were, he was asking, so if you are saying that consciousness exists for entire day, are you saying that the rising moment is half a day and the vanishing is half? If it exists for one month, the, the consciousness occurring for uh, 15 days, uh, and pass away during 15 days. So these were the counter arguments. So they decided to be suggesting if Venerable Moggali Puttatissa was of the opinion that the consciousness had three phases, the question the, he the question he would have asked should have asked was, uh, does the consciousness arise one third of the day, persists one third of the day, and passes away one third of the day? So it makes a very 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 strong argument he's bringing. So if it was so it shows that if it if then the question regarding the one month, uh, he would have asked the question, does the consciousness arise for 10 days, persist for 10 days and pass for 10 days. So, but the question was asked, does it arrive for 15 days and pass away during 15 days. So, based on that, he is suggesting that the Muratika explanation is much stronger about the consciousness. Then, regarding the, uh, the phase arising, it takes the entire one mind moment for its arising. Uh, he doesn't give any explanation, but he says that according to Mulatika, uh, the opinion is like this, because uh, Rupa and Nama has different paces, different paces. Then with regard to the last point, uh, that the Rupa arises only at the rising moment and vanishes only at the vanishing moment of the consciousness, he doesn't like it, he really doesn't like it, but he says, he was unequipped equipped with uh, any uh, evidences to refute the idea. Then he says it's better to go more much deeper and better not to explain Yamaka according to your wish. Uh, but uh, he, he explains what the Mulatika is suggesting and he shows that Mulatika evidences are very strong and it cannot be rejected on uh, easily. So, but he didn't have any, any way to reject it. He says, just says, it's better not to say like that, but he, he even didn't have any information, really, but he, it seems like he didn't like it. So this is what the, even they, I think it's, it's a place where Lady, Lady Seattle was struggling to, to give an exact, exact answer. So in such places, he just gave uh, information and he just kept silent. I see. Thank you, Pante. Um, and then, <laughs> <laughs> so based on this discussion, I mean, it's, one thing that I can say that bother, it bothers me a little bit is that the discussion shows that these commentator and sub-commentators, they are the scholars. They use evidence to, to, to show their claim, to, to, to demonstrate their claim, to prove their claims, but they don't realize or experience this these by themselves. Yeah, if you go into, now I'll bring, when we discuss about the sadda, the sound, it shows that they are going with evidences. It's not. It's not about a direct realization when it comes to these sort of matters. Because, because if there was such a direct realization, as you say, there cannot be. One point is there cannot be such disagreements, and uh, they sh they will not refer to any scholarly evidences that as 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 they are doing. So it's very clear to personally what I feel is uh, commentators and sub commentators were high great scholars who had a very deep understanding about the teachings and they were they were referring to some information then the question comes w weren't there anyone who realized this this is a very very good question so then it we give now i'm not uh, bringing down the faith on this matter now the question comes now it's it's very clear when you go into information uh, they were scholars and if you go into, when I, I shall explain about the sound, the Rupa sound, while we explain that, you find that they were fully, even whether the sound comes and strikes or not, the debates are there. They are fully based on the scriptures. They are fully based on scriptures. 
So then the, it, it brings us the, it troubles us. Uh, haven't anyone realized this explanation or, or haven't it happened like that? So then we, we go into the phases. Now, Tipitaka was there. Then we have ancient commentaries. Then we have Pali commentaries. Then we have Tikas. Right? Ancient commentaries, we have two types of ancient commentaries. The Pali ancient commentaries, or practiced ancient commentaries, ancient commentaries, and Sinhalese ancient commentaries. This is what Buddha Gosa translated into Pali. Pali ancient commentaries were translated to Sinhalese by ancient Sinhalese scholars, Sinhalese Theras. And these Pali commentaries had the origin from India. Right? Now, we don't have evidence of this, but we assume that they are same. There can be a, a gradual development. Now we take these ancient commentaries. We can trace it back to the back to India. Now the thing is, this has to be it originated from the Buddha, it's obvious. Even modern scholars agree that the roots of commentaries go till the Buddha. And uh, in the first council, surely the three councils, they have a lot of information added into commentaries. So then the question comes, what about their expl explanations and what about these, 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 these understandings? Now the question is, now we get an entire commentarial information, literature, which is claimed by Tikas, by Tikas, which came from the Buddha, originated from the Buddha. Now, we are unable to distinguish because it's obvious that the commentaries had a gradual development, had a gradual development throughout the phase, throughout the time. Now, which elements came from the Buddha and which didn't? We, are, we, we come into a huge difficulty in distinguishing this. The reason is, the reason is, this sort of information these sort of arguments the Pali commentators bring against the ancient commentaries. If Venerable Buddha Gosa thought or even, uh, even considered the entire ancient commentaries to be from the Buddha himself, he would not go into refute it and he would, he would clearly say these are scribal errors or may, may, errors made by the writers, the editors. But instead of saying that he just rejected the commentary, the explanation was wrong. And some explanations he accepted has been rejected by sub-commentators. So even the sub-commentators didn't have that sort of an idea. So they knew that this is a literature which gradually developed and was and came to Sri Lanka and was translated uh, eventually. So, but the thing is, then the question comes, which parts came from the Buddha and which part came from the councils and which were the parts that were add, added? That's another another point. Then the next question is realization. Realization. Now, as I mentioned, these information are not a burden for someone to realize the noble truth and to become a noble being. These are very in detail explanations, subtle explanations. And I personally believe even Arahants would not be able to give a solid answer to these questions uh, based on their understanding because they understand the suffering, the origin of suffering, cessation of suffering and the path to their cessation, uh, but they will not be able to say how many mind moments for a consciousness and how your mind moment for a matter and so forth. So the realization is regarding the Four Noble Truths and that would not suggest that even these arguments would not suggest that is not an evidence to say that there were no beings who realized this. Then they, what happens is they are, the literature comes into two portions Real, that can be directly realized and that cannot be directly realized. That cannot be directly realized. So what personally what I feel is now the arguments are regarding the points that cannot be directly realized. With regard to the re directly realization, there are no arguments in the Buddhist Theravada literature about the main positions, about the vipassana path, how the vipassana groups. If you look into the literature, there is a huge uh, 
uh, matching agreement among all the scholars on this matter. But when we comes into explanations such as the lifespan of a material thing or what is the phenomenon of uh, sound, how it strikes, all these they have, there are some discussions based on that. Then the question comes, so why, where does this material come from? So from the Buddha stuff, from the ancient times, from the ancient times, there was a literature, the doctrine has been established and there are explanations on this ex doctrine. So if this doctrine is something beyond the realization of ordinary arahants, of ordinary beings, other than the Buddha or, or some other lower beings, what happens, these explanations are, will become based on the literature only, literature only. So with the gradual development of the sasana, this has become the issue. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm of the strong opinion that there are no contradictions with regard to the parts that can be realized, which leads to liberation. But with regard to the other informations, I would not go. I would not say trifle, but some other information which are beyond our normal realization. There are arguments about this matter. <laughs> Okay, Pante. So in the Hali commentary, right? In the uh, also in the um, yeah, Samohanta, Samohana, Samohana, we know, know the yeah. yeah. So in, in the Kanda Kanda uh, part, then the commentator said that the lifespan of the Rupa is seventeen mind moment. In the Paticca Samupa other part, he says that sixteen. So he's the he's the author of both. Which means one of them has to be incorrect. Yes. One has to, has to be incorrect, yes. So it shows that as a literature, it had, it had uh, like, like, it was not a complete literature, I would say. Right. Okay, thank you, Sally. Oh, good morning, Sally. Good morning, Sally. So, actually, this question is... Uh, comes from another CLA, so because this time for her is a bit about a time. So okay. she sent a message to me and asked me to ask Andy. So her question is, may I know the origin statement of the body text that mentioned Ruba Vajana beans had only five Avini Voga Ruba? There's no uh, uh Pali, Pali means uh, the commentary, right? Sub commentary. Yeah, it's either commentary or sub commentary or is there any reference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am not able to give you the direct reference of the Mulatika, but I can give you, I think Dr. Ryan also asked this once, uh, the, what the, what the Paramatma Deepani says in the Rupa chapter, oh. Rupa chapter, he is quoting, Lady Sado is quoting from, quoting means referring to Mulatika, he is suggesting that this idea is there. I still could not find it in the Mulatika yet. In my in my studies, uh, but uh, um, Lady Shadow doesn't make like he's referring and he's in few places he's mentioning that uh, uh, the Mulatika is saying so. So if I give you the Pali, if you give me a few moments, even recently I I read it. Kalapa Yojana. Ah, is there another question I'll, while I'm searching? Yeah. Uh, no other. <laughs> okay. Right yes, uh, there is another question. Here. Yes, please, I'm listening. Yeah. Um, yes. So, in the, it is not, I think it's not related to the lecture, but. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll so In Dhammapada, verse number 17, it okay. says, month after month, the fool may eat only as much food as can be picked up on the tip of the kusa grass blade. But he is not worth the 16th part of those who have comprehended the truth. So the request is, Pandit, please explain the meaning of the 116th part. 116th part, one solas agga. Mase mase kusagena balo bunjeti bojanang naso sankata dhammanang khalang nagati solasin. Solasin khalang. This has two explanations. One explanation is like this, the other is like this. 
are two explanations for this. These are the uh, two opinions found in the literature. Some places we find this, some places we find this. Uh, yes, I guess the question is why is it 16? What, why is it, so what does it mean? <laughs> uh, why is 16? <laughs> I am unable to say that is how the literature says. Uh, I do not know what was the reason, maybe num 1 out of 16 was some, some sort of a prevailing idea in India in those days, but uh, that is the word that has been used by Buddha Moses. Kalang Nagati Solasing, Solasing Kalang. I do not know why he used, took number 16 instead of 15 or 14, but uh, this is how it has been interpreted, how much it is. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Yeah, there is no more question here. Okay. Uh, if you give me. Uh, Sunday? Yeah. Like, like, like that, Sola, Sola Sa or something. Mm, mm. It's related to their culture system, right? Seems like, that's right. It seems like their culture yeah, system. Because we see many, many times uh, Sola Sa, Sola Sa, Sola Sa, but they <laughs> never explain about the like, other numbers, right? Yes. Solasa and number seven, these are some, some maybe there were some uh, cultural influences on this. Seems yeah, because like. In some cultures, like uh, the number eight or number yes. nine is an auspicious number or something like that. Yes. Uh, so I, I think I am not able to find it now. So I will search it and let you know. Uh, and regarding Dr. Ryan's question about the Akasa last time, I think you remember we asked, discussed about the Atasalinis. Uh, the word yes, is yes. Ananta Akasa, not Ajatakasa in Antasani. It says Ananta Akasa, but it is referring to the Ajatakasa actually. So the word is Ananta Akasa. I see. Not the Ajatakasa. But uh, when you read it, uh, you can find uh, the same uh, idea was given. Uh, I read it and forgot what the reference was. That was. Uh, um, I can give you the reference. Yeah, and then also, but the last time when I asked the question about the uh, Aharaja Rupa and, mm -hmm. and, and Utucha Rupa. Yeah. Uh, and then I said that the um, um, Venerable, the late Venerable uh, Arewata Dhamma, I was wrong. I, I, I misunderstood what he said. So, so, so basically, what he said is like uh, you said, Pandey. So the, 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 the uh, Aharaja Rupa and Utucha Rupa only uh, are produced at the uh, one sub moment. This is the first sub one sub moment. Uh, first sub moment. moment. Yes. Ah, so he's suggesting that, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So thank you for that. I'm not able to give you the explanation, but uh, it says that even uh, 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 objects such as the Mahameru been cut into two and put under the Ananta Akasa, below the earth, it would keep on moving without without an end, without stopping. That's what it says. I see. I, I'll search for it. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, sorry. okay uh, thank you very much for listening. And I would like to inform that uh, to, today I am visiting the Navina Monastery to, because it's our tomorrow is our teacher's birthday, so we want to pay respect to him and to wish him good well, uh, good health. So I'll not be able to take the class tomorrow. Uh, I'll take the classes on next Saturday, uh, uh, starting from the Samuttana Kamajarupa. It's a new like, new series, new new topic, which will be quite interesting. So wish you all the best and uh, thank you for joining. May all of this merit be able to may be able to attain the final liberation and may this help for the sustaining of the Buddha Sasana. Buddha Sasana Chiran Tittatu, Buddha Sasana Chiran Tittatu, Buddha Sasana Chiran Tittatu, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.